I pray that we pour out this maternal, endless, and holy love, and that we're able to go outside of ourselves every day. Whatever we're struggling with, God will help to lift us supernaturally, really to lift us from ourselves and lift us from our circumstances when we open ourselves so that He can pour out through us. Welcome to Mamas in Spirit, a podcast pointing you towards God in everything you are and everything you do. I'm Lindy Wynn, and it's a blessing to be with you. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this gathering of Mamas in Spirit. It is always a blessing to be together. You are a gift to my heart and a gift to my life, and I just pray for God's boundless and endless blessings on our time together today. For those of you who are new, Mamas in Spirit is a mini retreat in a podcast. People testify and give witness to how God has converted and changed their hearts and their lives, even when in extreme difficult situations and circumstances. And today, kind of exciting, is a little bit different. I have not done this since season one, episode one, but I'm going to be sharing with you just myself today, just my little self, and sharing with you a piece of my story, but really what the meaning of mamas in spirit is. What does it mean to be a mama in spirit? Because I think at surface level and at first, that could seem like it just means mothers in spirit or moms in spirit, but it's actually quite deep and comes from a very personal and intimate place in my heart and life, and I believe encompasses God's hopes for us at the heart of the matter. So in that spirit and in the Holy Spirit, let us begin in prayer. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Dearest Lord, you are so good to us. In so many ways, you planted the seed for Mamas in Spirit four or five years ago, but yet really, Lord, you are always at work and you really planted seeds half my life or longer ago. And this is just another culmination of that journey and really of your mercy and your goodness and your love. So Lord, I just pray for your holy hand on everyone who's listening, wherever she or he is in this very moment. You know what's going on in each person's heart and life. You know how each person needs you. So we pray for just that, just exactly that, Lord, and for your perfect love for each one of them. And Lord, we just pray that this time is holy. We pray that this time is all about you, like the tagline that this podcast is just a means and a way to point all of us towards you and everything we are and everything we do. In your name we pray. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. So today I'm going to be talking to you about the word mama in Mamas and Spirit. And there are four parts that I'm going to be talking to you about. And the reason that I used the word endless earlier in the podcast is because that is the word that just keeps coming to my heart and mind about this podcast is that God's love is endless. The way God blesses us is endless. And those four different ways that I'm going to be talking about the word mama, three of them have to do with how God pours into us, how God loves each and every one of us just as we are and just where we are. So the first meaning of mama that I want to talk about is us as God's beloved daughters. So us as God's beloved daughters and sons for any man listening, (laughs) you're beloved too. So When I was preparing for baptism, I was 21 years old and I was not raised in a home of faith. And there was a long journey that led up to this time of preparation. And I joined RCIA. I went to my first Catholic school, Catholic University, Santa Clara University, and joined the RCIA program. And part of their campus ministry program was that we could go on service immersion trips. And one of them was to Tijuana, Mexico. And it was called Venever, come and see. And my goodness, did I go and see because this five day immersion trip exposed me to conditions in life that I'd never seen before. It broke my heart, but yet also opened up and revealed to me Jesus, the presence of Jesus the love of Jesus, and the call of Jesus. And so during this five-day immersion trip, we stopped at the dump and we spent time with the people who both worked and lived at the dump, which you can imagine was a lot to process and was heartbreaking. And we went to the migrant home and we went to an orphanage among other places. And there was something about the orphanage that I felt so drawn to and really 
drawn back to. So I ended up applying and spending the next summer in between my junior and senior year at this orphanage volunteering. I lived in a community of five women in a town called Tecolote, and five mornings a week, we would walk the hill into La Gloria to El Hogar Infantil to the children's home to be with the children. And I think it's really important to point out that the first morning I had to go escape for lack of a better word. And I went into one of the bathrooms and cried because it was just all too much. It was all too much. All of these children without either their own family because their parents were too poor to take care of them, which I can't even imagine for the parents and for the children. That's just devastating. And then also for the children who didn't have forever families, who didn't have families. There were both of those realities present at the orphanage. And so I remember being in that bathroom and just crying out to the Lord because here were his beloved children, his beloved daughters, and his beloved sons in these circumstances and so vulnerable as little children, so vulnerable. And so I came to see the great mercy and goodness of God during that time, one, in the openness of the children to both give and receive love. I mean, just the hearts and the purity, that pure love of children, like scripture talks about how we're called to love as children love. Even though they were in these circumstances, they were just still so hungry for love and so willing to love, to share their their hugs and their laughter. And we danced and we played and we learned and We did all kinds of joyful and fun things together in the face of of really some of these circumstances that were really, really difficult. And then also seeing the goodness of the volunteers that were there, the the staff at the orphanage and the people who created the orphanage and also the people who donate to the orphanage. And what I saw by the staff there and some of the volunteers is that when they talked to the little girls in particular, they would call them mama. And in the Mexican culture, this is a beautiful term of endearment. And there was something about it. There was something about the sweetness of it and the belovedness of it that really counterbalanced or even overcame the reality of the situation because that's what love does and that's what God love does. And so when I watched people with pure love in their eyes and just compassion and mercy and care, look at these little girls and call them mama, it struck my heart and it stayed with me. I always remember it, even long after I left, and obviously to this day, and to the founding of Mamas in Spirit. And so that's at the heart of the first message of Mamas in Spirit, is that you are a beloved daughter or beloved son of God. All over scripture, we are referred to as children of God or God's children, like in Galatians 3.26. You can go look up that verse if you'd like. But we are God's children. That is our inheritance. And it's so important that we know that regardless of our circumstances in life, regardless of what we experienced as children, even in our relationships, what is unchanging and permanent is that we are God's beloved children and that God is love. First John says, God is love. And so we We need to know who God is and who we are in relationship with God. And so mama, I look at that as that, like, that's how God looks at us. God looks at us as his little mamas, his little daughters in spirit, in the Holy Spirit. And God loves us with an endless and boundless and everlasting love. And I know, I know from my own experience, I mean, we're all on a journey and I know from sitting with so many women and men throughout my lifetime in that blessing and and children too, that there are so many ways in the world. There are so many things that tell us that we're not that. And so it's so important that we hold that so sacredly in our hearts and that we return to that time and time again, that we that we remain in God's love. And that is in John 15, 9. It tells us to remain in God's love. So I, I pray that for us. I pray for all of us to know that we are mamas and papas. 
<laughs> there are men who listen to Mamas in Spirit, Mamas and Papas in Spirit. And I've joked before that someone should be starting Papas in Spirit. Maybe our chaplain or my husband or together, they can create Papas in Spirit. <laughs> Because that needs to be counterbalanced in the world too. But that's the first thing I really pray and hope for you. And I pray that through all of these podcasts that you can go listen to any of the podcasts and you'll hear in the predominantly women, but also men who share that they have come to know more deeply that they are God's beloved child, but that you also hear that being witnessed to you and communicated to you personally and intimately and deeply in your own heart and life that you are God's beloved child. You are God's mama or papa. So that that is the first. So mama as God's beloved daughter or son. The second is mamas in spirit is these role models and these blessings that God gifts us in our life that sometimes are in our own mothers that we're raised with. And sometimes including that others or other women just in general, meaning this, that God blesses us with mamas in spirit. God blesses us with women in our life who love the Lord and who want to love into us. God will never leave us destitute or alone or without love in our life. And sometimes that means that we have to be open to God's love and God pouring into us and loving us in creative ways. And one of my absolute favorite scripture passages is the visitation between Mary and Elizabeth, because I believe that this totally and completely encapsulates this idea. The purity of love and heart between Mary Mary and Elizabeth in that scripture is glorious. And Mary's heart is perfect. She has an immaculate heart. And Elizabeth is a holy and faithful woman. And together in that moment, they give us this blessed example of what God wants for us and what God wants for us in relationships with other women. So if you are someone that in your life that you are hungry for a friend, a mentor, a mother figure, a mama in spirit in that way. I pray that for you. And I pray for you to have an open heart to that because sometimes we can be hurt in life because maybe some people have experiences with their own mothers or their own grandmothers or their own sisters or friends or whatnot that are hurtful and then guard up, kind of pull away. But God does not want that for us. God is so much greater than that. So this is a place, Mama in the Spirit is a place that you can come where you can listen to women who love you and who want the best for you, who are wishing you everything good in your life, who are wishing you intimacy with the Lord, who who are wishing you hope, who are wishing you healing. That there's that beautiful song on on the radio, and I wish I could remember her name, but but she sings that I pray for your healing. I pray your circumstances would change. She basically is praying every good thing over the listener to the song. And I just love that so much. And that's what God wants for us. God wants us to have the kind of relationship that that Mary and Elizabeth have. And you can find that here. And if you feel like you're alone in your circumstances, like if you're struggling with really intense things, like if you, you or someone you love is struggling with mental illness, or if you're struggling with a very difficult relationship in your marriage, or if you're divorced, or if your children or someone else you love are struggling with addiction or whatever it is, the list goes on and on and on. There is likely a podcast for you because four seasons later, all these glorious souls sharing deeply from their hearts and stories vulnerably and intimately what they've experienced and what they've gone through, they're they're offering that to you and as an offering back to the Lord, because the Lord has been so good to them, they want to share that out and pour that out and they want to pour it on you, you personally. And so I want you to know that, that the Lord wants you to have mamas in spirit. The Lord wants you to know the Lord is creative and that we are an adoptive family. And I'm going to talk more about that. And that the Lord will always bless your heart with exactly who and whom you need with God, God's self, and with others. And then the third thing I'm going to talk about with his own mother, our Mama Mary. And so part of being a mama's in spirit too is that we have been given this blessed mother, this spiritual mother who has the only immaculate and perfect heart to hold us 
to hold us near, to hold us under her mantle, to walk with us and to give us the only perfect example of love as a human, as a full human that we are called to not only emanate, we'll talk about that in a minute, but really to bask in, to sit in, to be comforted and held. Mary is the queen of martyrs. She she knows sorrow like no other, and she will love into you and hold you in a way that is supernatural in a way that is is glorious, in a way that is mystical, in a way that is beyond our understanding. And so part of being a mom in spirit is to know that we have this holy mother in heaven who who loves us and who wants to to love into us. And I it, it always has struck me so deeply that literally when Jesus is dying on the cross, he gives us his mother. He gives first to the disciple whom he loves, his mother, and he gives his mother, the disciple whom he loved. And that that passage in John 19, I want to encourage everyone to go read that in the gospel of John chapter 19. That scripture right before Jesus died is so important because not only does God bless us with his mother, the mother who he loves perfectly with his sacred heart and they have a perfect union together. He's giving her to us to love us with that perfect love that she loved him with. She doesn't love us with a love that's less than that because Mary only knows how to love completely. And so that love from Mama Mary is is available to all of us all the time. So those are the three ways that that God pours into us that symbolically the word mama embodies. So us being God's beloved daughters and sons, us having mamas in spirit, spiritual mothers in this lifetime, people to accompany us and walk with us and love into us the way that God wants us so deeply to be loved. And then third, our blessed mother, our mama Mary. And fourth is is also tied into that because this is the way that we're called to pour out. So God pours into us in all of these ways and so many more ways. I mean, God's love is infinite. But with with Mary's life, God gives us a blessed example. He gives us her fiat, her yes. He gives us all of these experiences and memories of her life for us to pray with and ponder so that we can say yes as humans and as women or men, but as women that we can say yes, like her holy and beloved example. And that's what God wants from us. So going all the way back to my first example at the orphanage and why that changed my life is because I became a mom in spirit, <laughs> kind of literally. So there was there was a great heartbreak for me at that orphanage because there was a little boy that I fell in love with, Coco, who started calling me mama, literally mama. And oh my goodness, he was only four years old. I was 21. There was no way literally that I could adopt him. Although as you can imagine, I, I would have if I could have, but there was literally no way for me to adopt this, this sweet boy that I loved so much and felt just such an organic and close connection with. He was the first little boy I really, really loved like that. And I had to say goodbye to Coco and leave Coco at the orphanage, who's now probably a man. But God very much redeemed that sorrow in this sense. God planted a seed in my heart of what it means to be a mama in spirit. And for me personally, it's been an adoptive mother first and foremost, but that is not what only a mama in spirit means. It means spiritual motherhood and that we are called as women, whether it's through adoption, through fostering, through biological motherhood, through loving everyone we encounter. There are people who are hungry for love and for maternal love everywhere we turn every day. And we need to know that like wherever we are, there is someone who needs a maternal glance, a maternal gaze, a maternal touch of love, who needs a mama in spirit. And so I pray this for us. I pray for us to be 
radically different in this world. I pray that as we go through our days, that we stay so attentive to the Lord and seeing Christ in others, to look into the eyes of others and to know that God is there and that God is in and within everyone that we meet and that that person thirsts. One of the last things Jesus said before he died was, I thirst. Well, we're all thirsting for the Lord. We're all thirsting for love on this earth. That is part of our human condition. And some people have it very, very difficult and are really, really struggling. And so I pray that by being poured into in our lives, in all the endless ways that God does, including the three ways that I talked about being a mama, I pray that from that and critically important that we pour out that we pour out this maternal or paternal, this maternal, endless and holy love, and that we're able to go outside of ourselves every day, whatever we're struggling with, whatever we're grappling with, because we all are, (laughs) we all are, life is real. We all have very, very real challenges, yet God is so much greater than that, and God will help to lift us supernaturally really to lift us from ourselves and lift us from our circumstances when we open ourselves so that he can pour out through us so that God can can love through us. And so I pray as you listen to these podcasts and you listen to how God has converted all of these hearts and all of these lives that you too allow yourself to receive that love and then to share that love and that we become love. We become love itself because that's who God is. God is love itself. God is the complete embodiment of love. And in John 13, 34 through 35, we get our call, love one another as I have loved you. So may we allow God to love us like these three ways that I talked about and so much more. And then may we pour out and share this love with others. I want you to know how blessed I am that you are a mom in spirit or a papa in spirit together. Together, we are so much stronger in the Lord and we need one another. We're all vulnerable and we all need community and the blessing of sisterhood and brotherhood in Christ so that we can continue to say yes, because together our individual yeses make a much greater, more resounding yes for the Lord. So please know that you can reach out to me at any time at mamasinspirit at gmail.com or on Instagram or on Facebook at Mamas and Spirit for whatever you need. If there's a prayer intention, I'm praying for you. If you're struggling with something specific in your life and you want to know if there's a specific podcast that you should listen to or a resource, because I'm very, very happy to also try to connect you to other resources or even other guests who have been in podcasts that talk specifically about whatever's going on in your life. So know that you can reach out to me at any time. And also you can go to mamasandspirit.com or anywhere that podcasts are played to listen to Mamas in Spirit. And most of all, know what an honor and a blessing it is to journey with you. So in closing, let us pray. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Dearest Lord, you are so good to us. Thank you. Help us to always know the spark of your joy, the spark of your goodness. Help us to all remember, just like the light of a candle, that your Holy Spirit, the light of your holy love is within each of our hearts and that you are loving us as we are, meeting us as we are. We don't have to change a thing. You want to be with us in this very second, in this very moment and every moment, the moments we think we're failing or the moments that we think we're doing okay or the moments that we just feel so close to you, to you They're all the same because you are our Holy Father and you love us in an everlasting way in every single moment of our lives. Thank you for who you are, Lord, and may we love you more fully as mamas and papas in spirit. Amen.
Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Can't wait to be together again next time. This is Lindy Wynn with Mamas in Spirit. May God bless you and yours always.